Hey guys, John here. In this video, we're going to go over how to print out multiplication tables in Java. So given some number, we're going to print out all the multiples of it up to some limit. So say if we start with the number seven, we'll print out seven times zero, seven times one, seven times two, up to whatever limit we set. And before we get started here, the full source code is available in a link down in the description. So go grab it. It's going to be a simple piece of code. I think we're going to use a for loop to do it. And at the end, I'm also going to show you how you can get that initial number as input from the user via the keyboard. So let's get to it. So first we're going to need a number that we're going to print out the multiples of. So let's just create that as a variable. We're going to use an int. We're going to call our number variable number. So int number equals, um, let's just print out the multiples of seven to begin with. So let's say we want to print out all the multiples of seven, seven times zero, seven times one, seven times two, all the way up to seven times 10. So we want to go from zero to 10, multiplying all of those by seven and print out the results. Now the easiest way to do that is probably with a for loop. So we're going to create a for loop starting with int i equals zero, starting with zero. And then we want to go while i is less than or equal to 10. So we're going to start with zero and end at 10. If we just add i less than 10, it would stop at nine. I'm going to do i plus plus. So we increment i each time. So inside of this loop, we're just going to print out the result of that multiplication. So like seven times zero equals whatever the result is. So let's just print that out where it's going to be a system dot out dot print line. Um, so first we want to print uh, the number that we want to do the multiple of. So just number. And then we want to say number times whatever the current value of i is. So here it'll be number times. And then the next thing, whatever the value of i is, is in i. So in the first run of this loop, it's going to say seven times zero. Because seven is our number, that's not going to change. And i in the first run of the loop is going to be zero. And then we're going to print out uh, equals. So seven times zero equals. And now we want to print out the actual result of that multiplication of seven times i. And to do that, it's kind of as simple as it seems. You can just literally print out number times i. We put that in parentheses so there's no chance of any wonkiness of it doing some other order of operations that we don't expect. It's going to calculate number times i, and that's what it's going to print out in that spot. So for the first run of this loop, we expect 7 times 0 equals 0. And then for the second run, 7 times 1 equals 1, and so on. And then the last thing we should see is 7 times 10 equals 70. And we should see everything in between. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. So yeah, all right, we've got seven times zero equals zero, seven times one equals seven, all the way down to seven times 10 equals 70. Awesome, we're putting out multiplication tables. Not so hard, right? Of course, we can mess around with this however we want. Instead of just going from zero to 10, we can go to from zero to 10,000. Let's just run that, see what happens. And of course that works too. Um, I'm not gonna go in and check all 10,000 of these operations to make sure that's doing the math right. I trust Java to do a fine job with that. And of course, we're all, we can also just change the number that we're writing the multiplication tables for. So let's go ahead and change this back to 10 real quick and change this to just do, um, and change this to do something else. I don't know, multiples of um, 12. So let's go ahead and print that out. Awesome, 12 times zero is zero, all the way up to 12 times 10 equals 120, perfect. So let's go ahead and make this code a little bit more robust. So you can hard code this number, but I think it's a little cool to be able to just take that number from the user. So you ask the user, hey, what number do you want to print out a multiplication table for? And then that's the number that you print out all these results for. And so to be able to get input from the user, we use the scanner class in Java. So I'm going to create a new scanner called scanner. So scanner scanner equals new scanner. And to get keyboard input from the user, we use system dot in here as the parameter to create our scanner. And since we're using Eclipse, we can automatically import uh, java.util.scanner. If you aren't using a fancy IDE like this, just this is the import you need for that, java.util.scanner. And then to get the input from the user, first we want to print out a little message to them to prompt them, hey, we would like you to input something. So that's just system.out.println. Uh, I don't know, it can be something simple, just like enter a number. And this prompts them to, guess what, enter a number. And then instead of assigning this int number to be something hard coded, we can then get this as input from the user. And to do that, we use the scanner object that we created and we call a method on it called next int. And calling this method allows the user to insert a number via the keyboard in the console. Let's go ahead and 
give that a run, see how it happens. So it's prompting me, enter a number, and let's do what we did at first, seven. And awesome, it's taken that seven and printing out the multiplication tables for it. Sweet. Uh, just for fun, let's try another number. Uh, I don't know, um, something ridiculous. And again, I trust Java to get those calculations right, but it looks like it's working great. And you can spot check a couple of them. Of course, uh, 586,156 times 10 is this with an extra zero at the end. And then 586,156 times zero equals zero times one is itself. Great, seems to be working like a dream. So one thing to note here, if you give it a run and it tells you to enter a number and you enter something that's totally not a number and Java can't make a number out of, you're going to see that it gives you an input mismatch exception. It's trying to create a number from something you give it that isn't a number and it's not going to work. So if you'd like to see a full tutorial about how to handle those kinds of exceptions when you're getting input from the user, check out this other video I made on getting keyboard input from the user via the scanner class. It goes through everything you need to know about how to handle those types of exceptions and then allows the user to enter another value until they enter something that Java can deal with. So that's it guys, not so hard, right? Pretty cool. If you got some value from this video, show me by giving it a like. And if you'd like to see more Java tutorials like this in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I think that's it, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Now wait, I forgot, the more astute of you might have seen this yellow underline on the scanner, and that's Eclipse complaining to me that I didn't close my scanner. Now probably it's not going to cause big problems in a small program like this, but it is always good practice to be a good boy scout and close your scanners. So to do that, just call scanner.close. So then we've made Eclipse happy, we get that nice, warm, cozy, fuzzy feeling about ourselves that we have nice, clean code and we close our scanners. And then we can feel good of ourselves, we've done some good for the world. You know, it's like uh, it's like feeding the homeless, saving a puppy. Uh, closing a scanner, I, I think it's about the same. <laughs> Alright, that's it guys, see you next time.